so we are back and we do have some pretty big news. So this year we actually took the cabinet shop, we split it off into its own company. That company is called Materia Millwork. So going forward, all of the NS Builders cabinetry will be under the Materia brand name. And yes, we do have new gear coming in. It will be here soon. So let's get right back into it. Behind me, you can see the first Materia kitchen. So this kitchen is actually headed to New York City. We are just about wrapped up on fabrication. The boys have been grinding here in the shop, getting this kitchen done so we can get it to the finisher and hit our schedule. We do have to plan a lot more on the logistics side to get this kitchen from our shop here in Boston all the way to New York City. We have an install crew that we're planning with, the general contractor, the other subcontractors that are working there in the field currently, and transportation getting this from here to New York. This is the first time that we are showing you guys this particular kitchen. So basically it is one giant wall of cabinetry and there will be an island right where I'm standing and we'll get to that in a little bit. So more or less the design here, all of the cabinetry is framed in by these large end panels, which do carry up and over across the top. Like I said, this frames in all of the cabinetry. So starting on the far end, we do have the refrigerator and freezer columns. The freezer door is currently not propped up over here yet, but we wanted to make sure that we were laying everything out 100% here in the shop before it even goes to finish. That way we're not finding any inconsistencies in the field later on once we're several hours away from our shop. So all of these doors that you see here are going to be painted a white color. So above the fridge, we just have some standard cabinetry and that kind of follows along with this deep but short cabinetry all the way across the top into this other tower on the other end here, which has just some adjustable shelving in the top with the built-in oven fitting into this space here. Now all the lowers also match and this profile is a bit unique. It is similar to the micro shaker that we've done in the past, just on a little bit larger scale. So you get this nice deep profile. All of the poles are gonna be integrated into the solid wood pieces here, coming along flush, which will have a pocket that you can grab and open these drawers. All of that hardware is going to be brass with a nice patina finish, which is currently in the works at the metal fabricators. All of the cabinetry in the lower portion here is fairly standard. We have a drawer bank and the sink cabinet with a standard double door, dishwasher, and then some additional cabinetry with the trash unit. So continuing with that framed in look, we actually have another one inch frame that's going to span this entire run, go up the sides and across the top. And under this top, all these walnut cabinets are going to live. We're going with a really nice natural walnut finish. When I say natural finish, I don't mean an oil or anything. It's still a sprayed polyurethane. It just gives it a more natural look. And basically, instead of giving it that amber kind of clear coat, it will go on looking more like the actual raw wood. So all of these walnut cabinets will go up tight to that internal painted frame. And this cabinet here is for the hood. This is actually upside down. It will get spun around and raised up to that same height with the insert going in below. One of the unique things about this particular hood is the way that this hood is mounted, it can't mount to the wall, it actually mounts to the inside frame. But here we didn't want to have a lift up door or a removable front panel, something that was gonna break up this nice sharp miter and that continuous grain pattern. So we came up with a different way to make this hood with the miters but still have it be removable and for that, we're actually going to use cleats that are mounted to either side of these cases. So this here is that cleat system. So this panel here will get mounted to the side of the cabinet. There's one for both sides. This lower portion here is visible. So we wanna make sure that that stays the same walnut as everything else. And this cleat here allows us to mount this frame, which will hold the insert directly to this cleat on both sides as well as the back wall. We have these notches in the actual hood face itself. The cleats are going to rest right in between here with most of the weight of the actual hood resting right on that cleat. Now keep in mind, these end panels get mounted directly to the side of this cabinet. That allows us to support the cleat on three sides and keep our reveals in the front between the door and the actual hood while keeping the door flush with the end panel in the lower area. So I know this sounds a little bit confusing, but 
let me grab a drill and give you a better idea of what I'm talking about here. So just for finishing purposes, we put these braces on so that this thin piece here doesn't break during transit or while at the finisher. So the idea here is that this panel, once it's mounted to the actual side of the case, will receive this cleat as so. But keep in mind, this is going to be fixed and the hood will slide in from the front right over these cleats. So the cleat on the side of this end panel is also gonna be mounted to the frame that supports the hood insert that spans across the entire length of the hood cabinet and also secures back to the wall, securing our insert, allowing us to set it up, access it without having any of the cabinetry in our way. Now keep in mind, this is upside down. So this lower portion here is going to be seen on the side of that range when you are cooking and the door does line up flush with the edge of this panel. So hopefully that clarifies some of the trickiness with this hood and why we did it that way. The rest of the upper cabinets here are just standard adjustable shelving behind these walnut doors. You may be wondering what this white tape is and why it's all over our walnut cabinetry. This is because all of the veneers that we used here in this kitchen, we hand stitched here in the shop ourselves. What does that mean exactly? Well, when we buy our veneers, we're not buying them pre-glued on sheets of plywood or MDF. We're actually buying loose leaf veneers. They're completely raw wood, very thin as the name suggests, and we book match them and join them together with this white tape here in our shop and then lay them up onto the actual panels to make the doors from. So as I mentioned, all of the walnut here on the hood is all hand stitched. And when we go over to the island, all of that walnut is as well. And the nice part about that is all of these flitches match. So the graining is consistent throughout the entire project as is the color and tone. Removing this tape is pretty simple. There's a couple different ways you can do it. When this tape is applied, it's actually moisture activated. So when we're putting this tape on, we have to use a wet rag to moisten the tape and then apply it. That same process can be reversed to peel the tape off, but typically we just sand right over it as we would sand the panels normally. As with any veneer, whether it's already applied to the sheet good that you purchased, or if you're doing it yourself, you wanna make sure that you're not burning through the veneer and exposing that substrate. The last thing with these uppers, they all get an under cabinet skin with an integrated light rail. So with all of these walnut cabinets, all of our doors are standard one inch thick. Now here, we're able to use our typical um, thick door hinges for all of these walnut doors. However, when we get over into these, you know, micro shaker, or as my friend Matt called them, mega micro shaker. So with these particular doors, they're actually an inch and a quarter thick. So for these, we needed to use Bloom's 125 degree hinge with the restrictor clip that is set at 92 degrees to prevent any kind of binding and allow these doors to function properly. Typically with all of our hinges, we use Bloom's Inserta hinges. The Inserta hinges are a toolless design, so we don't need to use any screws. Unfortunately, with their 125 hinge, they only offer this in the screw-in or dowel, so we can't use toolless. And all of these doors are just temporary. When we do go to put the actual final screws in, we do use nickel screws to match the actual color of the hinge. So let's go over and check out the island. Currently, the way we have this laid out is in two sections. So there's a front and a back. The front being the working side, which is facing the other areas of the kitchen, and the back being the seating area. So this section here is the back. There'll be overhang from the countertop, covering up here, and chairs behind. But we have some shallow storage cabinets for overflow items. This case here is actually flipped upside down so that we could assemble this with the toe kick and the end panels, which extend all the way to the floor. So one of the logistical challenges that we're working in with this particular kitchen is that it's going up into a high rise building in New York City. The elevator isn't very large and there's a lot of stairs that also are not very large. So we don't have a ton of room for additional length and this span is almost 12 feet long. So we took this into consideration during the design process and actually cut this up into several pieces where it made sense. 
So both the top frame piece and the bottom frame piece will have these intentional gaps that follow along with the seams in the doors, breaking it up, giving it a consistent look, allowing the grain to still match, and allowing us to get these pieces into much more manageable sizes that will fit in the elevator or up the stairs. As you can see, looking through all of these pieces, like I had mentioned earlier, every piece is hand stitched and matched all the way across. And this is the same for both this side of the island and the other side of the island, as well as the upper cabinets. But why are these two different colors? So I mentioned we get all of our veneers in raw form. This is what the panels look like before we sand them and the toe kick and filler have already been sanded. So you can see that color change just by a little bit of sanding. And then the final section of this kitchen is the working side of the island. Pretty standard, we have some lower cabinets with adjustable shelving, a couple of drawers, and a built-in microwave drawer with a drawer below it. So here on all of the walnut doors, the hardware is going to be slightly different than that of the painted doors. We're still having it custom made. It's still going to be brass with the same patina, but it's going to be more of an edge pole style rather than the integrated pole for those micro shaker doors. These poles here have already been cut in. It's just a standard edge pole so that the top of that pole is flush and same thing with the back. The idea here with these cabinets is that with the two doors below, they get a four inch pole on the top edge toward the center. So when you have these doors next to each other, there's about eight inches worth of brass pole. Now the drawers that are just a couple inches above will get an eight and one eighth inch long pole so that when you're looking straight on at these, the ends of both of the poles appear to be the same length. So you can see here on the drawer fronts, that pole is much larger. And that's gonna wrap it up for this kitchen, for this episode of Revealed. Appreciate you guys tuning back in. So that's gonna wrap it up for the fabrication of this kitchen and for this episode of Revealed. I appreciate you guys tuning back in and there's lots more to come. Stay tuned. Thanks for watching.